Okay, we have started. Welcome to the chat room, everybody. We like to wait until the sound comes through to the chat room before we get started so that people can be interactive. And we have a little bit of a light chat room today. I know a lot of people might be sleeping in still. Uh, Today we're going to talk about some draft prep. We're going to talk about a couple of Oreos for Eddie. We're going to talk about lots of stuff. So let's just go ahead and get started as soon as the sound comes through. I missed you guys last weekend. I was over visiting my mother in Seattle. So the sound is looking good. Let me tell the chat room it's good. good. Okay. Sound is good. Oh, that's me. Guest Timothy. What am I doing? I forgot to start the show. I got sidetracked on X. What do you what do you expect, right? Just give me one more minute here and I promise you we will be on our way. But I like to interact in the chat room too, so I got to get signed in. So sound is good, everything's good. Welcome aboard to Eddie Heckman, James K, JR Matt, Laura's here, Mitchell Rotorius, SM King Turd is here. We love King Turd. Mitchell is here. Great to see you. Good morning. Meryl should be right behind him. Boston Paul here. Danny Fuller. Captain Danny, great to see you. JR Matz, I hope you're having a little bit more luck with your family. You haven't been feeling very good, and we're all thinking about you. Um, I said James K. Chris from Cambridge is here to let us know whose birthday it is today. We have a great birthday in the chat room, so let me just tell you who it is. Uh... His name is Phil Plantier, Mm -hmm. 55 years old today. Chris from Cambridge added a little note saying that in 1998 he went to a Blue Jays game versus the Cardinals and interleague games were still fairly new at the time. So one of the hype gimmicks that they used was to have a pregame home run derby and it was Mark McGuire and Phil Plantier versus Carlos Delgado and Jacob Broomfield. Thanks for bringing those to our attention every day. It's wonderful to have you all aboard. I see you, Chris and Debbie Gallo. Wonderful. And hello to Penny. If you're awake, that means that uh, your husband, Captain Danny, has some fresh coffee. Big Al on the Prowl is here. Wonderful to see you. Now let's go ahead and get started. We definitely tell you always, when we find great nuggets... Who those nuggets come from so that you may follow these people too on X. Eric Cross 04, his last name is spelled C-R-O-S-S. It's E-R-I-C-C-R-O-S-S 04 at Twitter. He's a prospect guy. I told him the other day that his nuggets, they offer me a lot of context to talk about. And you know... It's not just about finding these and stealing from from these people. It's really about you take what they say and then you do a little digging. One of the things that I bookmarked when I was away, by the way, I have lots of bookmarks from X to talk about today. Not all of them made the cut. We'll have some other stuff to talk about tomorrow from the Nuggets. But Eric Cross brings up that only two prospects received 70 grade hit tools by baseball america this year one of them is jackson holiday but the other one is a d a e l i would assume it's pronounced adiel amador a m a d o r he is a 20 year old shortstop with the colorado rockies and you know, they do have Ezekiel Tovar slotted in at shortstop. They're starting shortstop. So let's take a look at both of these guys. Now, a lot of people don't pay attention to the Colorado Rockies, but you should. You do know that fantasy doesn't count whether a team wins or not. Fantasy counts a player's stats. They do not count defense, but the defense is important to pay attention to because that's what keep these guys in the lineups. And you know... Everything revolves around plate appearances, okay? Adiel Amador, 20-year-old shortstop for the Rockies. Last year, um, he made it to AAA. He's six feet tall. 
He has one of the best approaches and hit tools in the minors, which is why Eric Cross brought up that he's one of only two with the 70 hit tool. So he did have some injuries last year that limited to 69 games, but he was able to reach double A as a 20 year old. He's a switch hitter. And he's not really known for hitting a lot of home runs or stealing a lot of bases. But he has such a great plate. He's got a great plate plate discipline. And he did see some gains in his exit velocity last year, notching a career best 110.4 miles per hour max exit velocity. And he upped his hard hit rate and average exit velocity. He will not barrel the ball as much as we like to look for in fantasy. But this is somebody that if you're playing in dynasty leagues, he needs to be drafted. I'm not telling people in mixed leagues to draft this guy. He's But you could. He's 598 overall ADP. He's ranked the 25th best prospect, and he's 164 ranked in Dynasty. Now, let's talk about his competition, who is Ezekiel Tovar. And by the way, this guy doesn't just play shortstop. Yes, Ezekiel Tovar is blocking him at shortstop, but he also played a good chunk of games at second base last year. I'll tell you how many. 20 games at second, 44 games at shortstop. So he should go into the season qualified at both of these positions. And it's way more likely that when he does get called up, he'll take over second base instead of having to compete with Tovar at shortstop because their second baseman currently is Brendan Rodgers, all right? Now, Brendan Rodgers, 27 years old still. He did close last season pretty strong. He batted 348 with a 392 and four home runs over his last 17 games. But he's never really turned into the power hitter that we expected him to be several years ago. He's projected to hit 269 with 13 homers. He doesn't steal any bases. So if one of these guys is going to get their job taken away for this Amador guy, I wish I knew how to say his name better, but he's worth bringing up anyway. So thanks to Eric Cross for that. Now, another tidbit I found on there, you have a tidbit by Vlad Sedler, who's talking about the second base ADP. He says... He posted on there the first six rounds in the last three weeks. These are all, there's eight different second basemen going in the first six rounds. And he says he's out on all of these guys. They include Mookie Betts, Ozzie Albies, Marcus Simeon, Altuve, and a few others. It's not really important to list them all out for you. But I do want to bring up the fact that second base is so deep. And Mookie Betts might be the exception, although he's going fifth overall. He does also qualify at outfield, which is a position that drops off substantially early in the draft. You do not want to wait on outfielders this year. You can absolutely wait. Middle infield, that includes shortstop and second base. There are a ton of late round targets on here. So what I did is I first I went the NFBC to make sure that what he posted was still relatively uh factual and it is absolutely these guys they're going you know way too early now if you're going to wait on any position I cannot stress this enough wait on shortstops and second baseman you do not need Altuve Nico Horner he's going 60th overall but I found a couple great targets Now, I'm sure there's a lot of guys that fall in between 90 ADP and 200 ADP, but I wanted to give you some extra deep targets to go for here. You got Whit Merrifield, okay? Now, let me just tell you where he's going. As far as um, NFBC, they have Whit Merrifield at 314 ADP. Whit Merrifield is 35, so let's get that con out of the way right now. But at 35 years old, he stole 26 bases last year. You can't just assume it's going to drop off completely. I mean, 
What's a reasonable thing to expect of a 35-year-old guy? He's going to steal 20 bases. All right? That's a conservative projection here. He's going to steal 20 bases. He's going to hit double-digit homers probably. And his batting average is great. It is not going to kill you ever. His ADP, according to Rotowire, is 249 overall. Now... Yes, they did have a cheating scandal, and I absolutely appreciate you bringing that up, Triple Play. It's just, uh, we, they have, um, it is important to follow it if you're spending money there, but, and I've been following it very closely, so is Lenny. It's a horrible situation that has happened over here at NFBC, and, but we're going to give them the opportunity to fix it. To They did hire a third party auditor they've sent out emails they put out a statement i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here we've known these guys for years that doesn't mean that you should trust them just because we trust them but when you do know somebody personally these guys have done a lot for the fantasy industry we constantly use their adp every year they host our leagues they're just they have a great product and it's just so unfortunate that this has happened And I do believe that they will continue to be as transparent as possible and continue to do the work that needs to be done to fix this. You know, you spend money on these places looking to win money. You you know, you put your money in and, you know, it's betting. But still, you know, you want to be assured that you're playing on a a fair playing field. And um, so anyway, that's true. If you invest money at NFBC, you should be paying attention to the scandal I'm not going to talk any more about it besides that. But ADP for Whit Merrifield, 249. I love Whit Merrifield as a target this year. Is he still qualified at outfield? He should be, right? Outfield and second base. Either way, we're talking second base right now. Brandon Lau. I know. Brandon Lau. Why do I bring him up? His ADP is currently 268 according to Rotowire. And let's see what his ADP is for NFBC. Brandon Lau, 313. Okay, give me a break, this guy. This guy has 30 home run potential. He hasn't been able to do it since 2021 when he played a full season and he was healthy that whole year. He has not been healthy all season since 2021. He's 29 years old, so it's not really age that's bothering him. It's just that we haven't seen it, and that's why his ADP has totally sunk this year. He does struggle to hit lefties. I must uh, I must admit he doesn't hit lefties that well, but look. I mean, ADP 268, I'm not telling you to target this guy. I'm not telling you to draft him early. I'm telling you that at 268 or 300, if this guy is still available, there's no possible reason why you should pass him up. Like I said, he's got what it takes to smash 30 bombs. Let's talk about to the chat room here. We'll see if he adjusts. Uh, Let's see. McLean. Yes, McLean is on the list of the guys that Vlad uh, showed. He's one of the top second basemen going at the moment. He's a youngster. I get it. Everybody loves these youngsters. But we're playing fantasy here. Okay? There's a lot of... I'm, I'm telling you... Take your target off of Matt McLean. Get yourself an excellent outfielder because you're going to turn around in the draft and you're going to be like, holy crow, where did all the outfielders go? It rhymes, okay? So, you know? Good morning to Michael Johnson. We love to see you in the chat room. And we tell Katie Little, we love her too. Let's see. So, Boston Paul not feeling good, it says. Feel better soon, Boston Paul, everybody. That must mean that you are done speaking to the doctor. Okay, can't log in, y'all. You're Michael Johnson. Jasmine, that's your nickname today. SM King Turd brings up McLean's K rate. He might be a lot cheaper if he didn't get hurt. He might be a lot cheaper if he didn't get hurt. He probably would. Anyway, we'll see how he adjusts. Matt McLean, we'll see how he adjusts. He really likes him as a player. He just says that he's, uh, uh, you know, falling into a top 100 pick is a little too aggressive for Turd's liking. 
That's right. Tommy Johnson, good morning. J.R. Matt says McLean should be, and this is coming from our resident Reds insider here, J.R. Matt's says McLean should be 2020 in spite of that strikeout rate. The Reds have all all have an approach of taking a lot of pitches and being selective. They don't even change their approach with two strikes. Lots of called third strikes. Okay. Triple A, Big Al, and Chris Gallo. Good morning to King Hap. I talked to Triple Play already. I said hello to Chris Gallo and who else? And uh, that's. I'm on top of it. Big Al on the Paral. All right, another second baseman that you might want to target here. Now, this guy's not as uh, cheap as the other two that I mentioned, but he's still worth talking about. Thyro Estrada, 27-year-old second baseman for the Giants. Can you imagine if he played somewhere else? Okay. Last year, he hit 14 homers and stole 23 bases. And once again, his batting average at 271. He's projected by Rotowire to go fifth, uh, steal 22 bases, hit 15 homers. Drive in 56 runs and score 67 runs. So this is, what are you barfing at, Key Hap? I like Thyro Estrada at his um, 145 ADP. He does take a hit in on-base percentage leagues, but he is a great defender, which will also keep him in the roster, in the lineup every day. He has dual eligibility at second base and shortstop. ADP 145 overall. There you go. That's going to be good. Now, what about Brandon Drury? He's uh, 31 years old now. He He's playing for the Angels. Last year, 26 homers. This guy does not steal bases. And if you're looking for some stolen bases for your middle infielder, this might not be the guy for you. But his ADP is too great to pass him up. 238 ADP. We're expecting him to hit another 25 homers next year. He'll probably drive in 80 runs. He'll score 70 times. And you might get one stolen base, but don't count on it. Because if you do, it will probably be an accident. <laughs> That's my joke. Okay. Hello, Rotorius. Th- nice to see you. You have Drury on your list. Also, um, he did lose third base eligibility, so that's it. He's a second baseman, and he does strike out quite a bit, but you know this guy has the exit velocity. He has the hard hit rate. Both of those went up last year, and for the past two seasons, he's been a regular player. He signed with Angels for another season, And it's pretty unlikely that the Angels are going to, even at this point, hire enough players to to push him out of an everyday job. There you go. He's got middle and corner eligibility, which means he plays... I don't want to even say where he plays because I'm not sure. Does he play first or third base? I thought I read third base. Drury. Oh, he plays... Is it first or third? Third. Okay, I think he plays third. Definitely qualifies at short at second base. Nice to see twenty three people in the chat room. Hello to Jeremy Gibbs. Everybody's healthy and happy. Chris from Cambridge says he hopes that Brandon Drury stays put in California. All right, now here you go. Another tidbit. This one is from Nate Silver. He says, uh, if you take Steamer 600, which is every hitter projected for 600 plate appearances, all right, catchers only have to have 450 plate appearances to show up on the Steamer 600. The best fantasy player for the Baltimore Orioles in 2024 is Gunnar Henderson. Nobody's going to be too surprised by that. But guess who the second best Oriole on the Steamer 600 is, I'm going to give you a chance to guess, Eddie. Who's the second best Oriole on the Steamer 600, Eddie? We'll skip that one for a little bit. Malpal. Malpal is here. Great to see you, Malpal. Frank Stample. This this one's coming from Frank Stample. He, um, he brings up Henry Davis. Henry Davis currently ranks 278 ADP. 
He did not, he will not qualify as catcher to enter the season. However, he will enter spring as their catcher, especially, and that is known because this is coming straight from the GM, Ben Sherrington. Henry Davis will enter the spring as the starting catcher in Pittsburgh. His ADP is currently sitting at 278. The reason that he will likely get the most time at this spot is because Andy Rodriguez is out for the season. All right. Henry Davis is the starting catcher in Pittsburgh. Now, last year, he only hit seven home runs and stole three bases along with a horrible 213 batting average. His strikeout rate spiked to 27 percent, even though in the minors, his strikeout rate was constantly low 20s and high teens. So it does seem as if Henry Davis is having a little bit of a struggle Hitting major league pitching, that's fine. I'm not I'm not trying to tell you whether or not he's gonna ever have a strikeout percentage under twenty seven. But if you look at what he's done before, the chances are good that as he gets more comfortable in the majors, he will likely be able to work on that somewhat because his whole career has shown that he does not strike out this much. Um he did play through a right hand injury, but Look, he had a 7% barrel rate, 88.6 average exit velocity. In addition to proving that he can stay healthy this coming season, where is he going to play defensively? The thing is, the reason that his ADP is so high at 260, whatever it is, 278 is his ADP, he doesn't qualify a catcher. So... Yes, he'll be your backup catcher, and he will qualify at catcher entering the season, but absolutely, he will get some playing time immediately at catcher. And and also, another thing about Henry Davis is that he's he's just buried so far in the outfield depth on the the draft boards. You're looking for a catcher. He's not going to show up in a, as a catcher, he shows up as an outfielder. So go ahead and put him in your queue or whatever you do in your drafts and keep him for later because he could be very good. Rotowire is expecting him to hit 17 homers and steal 11 bases. That's excellent for a catcher, right? I mean, you don't get a lot of catchers stealing bases. And I will say there's a lot more catchers than there used to be in fantasy. But this guy's a perfect stash late in drafts. Another one from Eric Cross 04, talking about Trevor Story. Hold on a minute. We have some good guesses in the chat rooms. Okay, we have some good guesses for this. Eddie, what's your guess? He said Cowser, number two. That's not it. Triple play guess Austin Hayes. It is Jorge Mateo. That's right. It's Jorge Mateo. Let's talk about him for a second. Last year, he batted 217, stole 32 bases, and hit seven home runs. How in the heck is this guy ADP 530? This guy is going to steal you at least 20 bases, at least. He stole 32 last year, and while he's not probably going to ever get you double-digit home runs, that's not what you're drafting him for. He should not be going undrafted in in leagues. All right? He's going to play. This guy signed in November a one-year, $2.7 million contract with the Orioles to stay and avoid arbitration for next season. It's Mateo. Well, he must be great defensively. He must be great defensively. And he's, you know, this Steamer 600 is based on how many plate appearances you're going to get. You only you only show up on this list if you're projected to get 600 or 450 if you're a catcher. That's still a lot for a catcher. Anyway, it is Mateo. So there you go. Okay. We're talking about Trevor Story. Let's talk about Trevor Story. <laughs> Turn your funny. He says, everything we've heard about Trevor's story this offseason has been positive, which is definitely encouraging, and he is going to need a nice bounce-back season in 2024. But 
Eric Cross was commenting on another post from somebody that quoted the pitch, the hitting coach say Pete Fats says that Trevor in person, he saw him and he was blown away. He has his hit strength back and is hitting the ball again. Could we guess on a bounce back from Trevor's story 2020 season? Let me hear from my Red Sox fans in the chat room. Eric Cross is a big Red Sox fan, by the way. Not that it matters. He's a real smart guy when it comes to prospects and youngsters. But let's talk about Trevor's story. 31 years old. Last year, batted 203, hit three home runs, and stole 10 bases. Obviously, that was horrible. He he began the season injured. He didn't even make his debut until the first week of August last year. He struck out at a crazy rate of 32.7% of the time he was striking out. He also posted his lowest walk rate of his career. He had his lowest average exit velocity ever and his lowest hard hit rate since 2017. Yes, it sounds horrible. Let me tell you, look at his ADP, 193. Now, I want to have the input from the chat room. When we're talking about ADPs. It doesn't mean how good the player is. It definitely doesn't mean anything of that sort. You look at the ADP so you can figure out the market value and what people are willing to pay. No way in God's green earth am I going to draft Trevor Story under 200. Because while I agree that we should take a look at this guy and you're going to be able to possibly tell during spring training because if what the pitching coach is saying is true or the hitting coach, sorry, (laughs) maybe that's why they talk so good about Trevor Story. It's the pitching coach analyzing him, right? (laughs) All right, moving on. Okay, the hitting coach is looking at Story, telling us that he has his full strength back and that means that he's been doing a lot of work this off season, right? So keep an eye on Trevor's story. But at this point and this stage of the game, he won't be on any of my teams because there's a lot of guys at ADP 193 that I could guarantee. Well, nothing to guarantee. But your chances are better as far as getting. I mean, we just talked about several of them from second baseman. That we found deep in ADP. And that is not, you know, I'm only going to draft Trevor's story if he's like the only one who has hope on the board because I just don't trust him. Look, Trevor's story, 31 years old. Can he do it? You do remember he came from Colorado, but so did Arenado. And we always question whether or not these hitters are going to do any good outside of Colorado. Trevor Story, I mean, it goes way beyond just the ballpark factors in this situation, though. He's been absolutely a nightmare. And I want to hear what you have to say, King Hap and Boston Paul, about this uh, comment from the hitting coach. And the comment also came from Alex Cora talking about he talked to the hitting coach saying that he has his strength all back and he's hitting the ball again. And, of course, depending on how much of a Red Sox homer you are, are you going to expect 2020 from Trevor Story? Let's hear from the chat on that. Chris from Cambridge says batting 217 could stem from being bounced all over the batting lineup. Lenny would agree with you. I think that's a ridiculous excuse, but Lenny would agree with you. Eddie Heckman says Jorge Mateo was on fire for hitting in April, but crap the rest of the season. And Chris from Cambridge says a new year brings a fresh slate for Trevor Story, right? That's right. Where's my Boston people in here? All right. Big Al likes Von Grissom. So do I. I think he's on the list to talk about. But you know, Von Grissom, absolutely somebody to take a chance on this year, depending on where his ADP is. But you're going to get double-digit steals, probably double-digit home runs from this guy. His problem was finding a place to play was not his offense. It was his defense. The Red Sox have pretty much said, we don't care about his defense. We're going to play him anyway. And hopefully he... uh 
improved it. It's not something that maybe you could never improve. And if that's the case, then he's still a good hitter. Jordan Westberg, bringing him up. A high round draft pick. Moved between second and third base. He's really not that high of a draft pick here, for according to NFBC. He was on my list to talk about. Let me pull him up. Jordan Westberg going 368 overall. Um, he's gone as early as 206, but this is another guy to pay attention to. Is Jordan Westberg going to get some playing time over there? Because if he is, his projections look pretty darn good. Okay? And King Turd says about Trevor Story, if he can go 2020, it might come with a 235 batting average, a 310 OBP, and a 350 slugging. I think uh, Turd is right with that. And according to what he did last year, which was 210, right? 230 is not horrible. 230 is not as bad as it used to be. All right. Let's go. Well, what do you think of uh, Boston Paul? Are you here still? I know you don't feel good today, so. Okay. Let's talk about Lindor just real quick again. Because John Anderson pointed out on X, the 30-30 season since 2000, and that's it, 2000. There's been, I don't know, about 15 guys that have hit 30-30 since 2000. Francisco Lindor, 31-31. Ronald Acuna Jr., 41-73. This is from last season. Ronald Acuna also did it in 2019. And Jose Ramirez did it in 2018. But let's talk about Francisco Lindor, okay? I just don't believe in drafting a shortstop this early when there's so many middle infielders late in the draft. I would make an exception for Lindor, but you know what? Where is he going on ADP? And are you guys willing to draft Lindor in the first or second round because that's back where he is going again? 31-31 last year, by the way. And Acuna, he goes first in every draft. So... Anthony Rendon, Fangraphs, okay, is projecting him to play in 131 games. Is that possible? Because he certainly isn't projected to play in 131 games at Rotowire. 43 games, more like it. The guy hasn't topped over 100 games since 2019. All right, and he's probably never going to do it again. He's 33 years old, and he really pissed off a lot of people when he made his comments. But good grief, how can people be so offended over somebody saying something that everybody believes and everybody said it from the dawn of time? People want shorter seasons. So I guess if you're getting paid a bunch of money, but you're always injured, you don't have the right to come out and say the truth. They asked him a simple question. What do you think could be done to make baseball better? And he said, shorten the season. Good grief. He was like thrown off baseball rankings over it. I'm sorry, but if you're an expert and you're literally throwing people off your rankings because you don't like a comment that they made, you're just despicable. And I can't believe anybody would pay for your stuff. But not only that. Anthony Rendon is not great. I'm not telling anybody to draft him. You go, not, but then, but then these people, they don't even have the, they think it's fun to cancel people. They, they're proud of this. So they go on X and they say, oh, my top 500, I just updated it. And I threw Anthony Rendon off because F that guy, you draft him if you want. How is that helping anybody? Rendon is not worth drafting flat out, but you could have taken him off quietly because of that. But because these people have been rewarded, okay, for their cancel culture attitude, they think it's so cute and cool to get on social media and talk about you, you just kick this guy off your rankings like he doesn't exist because he, because he said something you don't like. Now, moving on. Jock Peterson. Who's all in for Jock Peterson? I'll take him, okay? 483 ADP, that's going to change now that he has a team with Arizona Diamondbacks. Definitely. Tommy Johnson, have a great day. Katie Little. Good morning to Katie Little. 
All right, Jock Peterson, last year, 15 homers, no stolen bases, 235 batting average, 483 ADP, people. Now he's with the Diamondbacks, okay? He saw most of his playing time at DH, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be the DH for the Diamondbacks, and you don't have to worry about him having to get a spot in the outfield, but he can play all three outfield positions if needed. Currently, he's ranked as their opening day designated hitter and I have to say aren't the Diamondbacks doing a great job of getting some more power this guy's a lefty the Red Sox should have went out and signed this guy they need a lefty so bad they need lefty pitchers they need lefty hitters they have no lefties one lefty on their entire 40-man roster so Jock Peterson they did sign, uh, they got A. Eugenio Suarez from Seattle. They signed Eduardo Rodriguez. They also return, um, are welcoming back one of my favorite guys, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., right? ADP for Jock Peterson. Give me a freaking break here. Put him on your list immediately. If you're drafting today, this is not, this is going to be a good steal. And if you're drafting in two weeks, it might still be a good deal, but we'll have to check back because this is going to be a situation where his ADP is going to change, just like Reese Hoskins, who we were talking about just the other day, the day before he got signed. We were like, Reese Hoskins is a steal at that ADP. And I bet you it's, I bet you it's, uh, it's going to get to a point where we're going to have to start talking about, How early is too early for Reese Hoskins? Because this guy was going to hit 30 bombs no matter what ballpark he signed in. That's why it's important. I know Daniel Ferrara shared on Facebook a list of the tiers of the remaining free agents. And you make sure that you keep your, you keep these guys in your mind because before they sign, if you know they're, that, you're almost guaranteed that Reese Hoskins was going to sign. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't get more sure of that. You know what I mean? Without him actually signing. So you can draft these guys. The guys you know are going to get signed. Not guys like Trevor Bauer, where you don't know if he's ever going to play baseball again in the States. But with um, some of these Free agents, you're going to get a great deal drafting them before they sign with the team. Reese Hoskins was always going to be great because, you know, you don't have to worry about what ballpark he's going to. He's going to hit the ball out of the park. All right. So, Jock Peterson, who's in on Jock Peterson at ADP 483? He qualifies as an outfielder right now. And I'm telling you once again, let me, uh, let me burn this into your brain. The outfield player pool drops off significantly. You will find yourself in a draft and you will say, holy moly, where did all the outfielders go? So address this position early. And the moral of the day, wait on middle infielders. We're talking about second baseman today, but next week we could talk about some real good late round shortstops that you can target. All right. Now, he's Jock Peterson is the 118th outfielder off the board right now, according to NFBC ADP. That is going to change. His current ADP at NFBC is 582. The earliest he was drafted is 283. Rotowire has him 483. I told you that's going to change crazy, but take advantage of it while you still have a chance. Now, another Orioles tidbit, okay? Orioles remain active looking for starting pitching, okay? Michael Lorenzen is one that they've expressed interest in. So let's talk about Michael Lorenzen. First of all, this is not, this, he's going to have a job somewhere. The question about him is whether or not he's going to be a bullpen guy. Is he going to be a starting pitcher? He's been both in his career, but his ADP is worth talking about. 527 is where he's going. And look, This is going to be up to you whether you choose to draft him because he's got some flaws for sure. He finished the season with a 418 ERA. In 2000, he did have a 358 ERA, which is a big difference between 358 and 418. The 418 overall 2023. But 
Before he got shipped off to Philadelphia when he was pitching for Detroit, he maintained a 3.58 ERA and a 19.9% strikeout rate. This guy's spin rate is through the roof. One of the highest spin rates in baseball. Um, I have to admit, I haven't checked that recently, but his spin rate is still solid. He just hasn't been striking out enough batters. However, one of the good metrics that you can look at to get an easy read on how good a pitcher is, is to see how many hits allowed versus how many innings pitched. It's just the most simple thing. And I'm not saying that's, you know, that that should be end all be all, but it'll give you a good idea. Uh, Lorenzen allowed 138 hits in 153 innings that's less hits than innings pitch, so that's a good thing. Uh, but the problem here is his X ERA was 455 and his X FIP is 468. That is not good. It really pretty much says he's going to do exactly what he did last year. I'm just saying, it, you know, 527 ADP, you never know. You just never know with this guy. I'm not telling you to draft him, by the way. So, as obviously, my confidence on this dude is not high. But I had to bring him up, especially since the Orioles are looking at him. And there's more than one team looking at him. He's 32 years old. Rotowire projects him. 87 strikeouts, a 426 ERA. But none of this matters. And that's why I'm going to stop reading the projections because none of it matters. What matters is where he goes and where he slots into the rotation or the bullpen that's what counts so let's keep an eye out for Lorenzen tomorrow Lenny and I are going to address and talk about David Robertson uh signing with the Texas Rangers we're going to talk about that more of course King Turt is our Texas Ranger insider our resident Rangers insider and um Okay, J.R. Mads, have a great day. I'm reading. I'm reading the chat room. Danny Fuller calling Jock Peterson Jockstrap. That's helpful. You know what? If you're going to call someone names, go ahead and though and then explain why he's a jockstrap to the fantasy community because just saying something like that doesn't help anybody and if you're staying away from him you should tell me why yes he can't hit lefties okay whatever that means he's still gonna hit 20 bombs that's my opinion okay malpal great to see you you know the chat room isn't really whole until malpal and tina show up right leonard yes right all right, so how's my show going, Leonard? You're the best. I gave him a bo- I gave him a big bowl of fruit and vegetables to snack on while he listens to the show. That's it. And I'm home now, so all is good. Now, what? Like I said, we are going to talk about David Robertson tomorrow with um, on the Lady and the Legend. But here's one more for you, prospect lovers, dynasty people, from Eric Cross. If you're on X, go follow this guy, Eric Cross 04. He talks about Chase Petty. P-E-T-T-Y. Chase Petty. Uh, let's see what he did last year. He said, this is what he says. Chase Petty should really shoot up rankings in 2024. He says to get in now while the price tag is still reasonable. MLB Pipeline also tweeted about Chase Petty. They say that um, they put it in quotes. So this came from Chase. He says, I should be ready to go. No leash applied. He says after taking things slow last season and dealing, he was returning from an injury from 2022. So last season they they eased up on him. He has no pitch or inning counts this coming season. In the minors last year, he played a total or he pitched a total of 68 innings, struck out 66. His ERA was under 2 with a whip of 115. At double A, he only threw 8 innings. So this guy is not probably ready to come up. But according to um, Eric, he says that this kid, if you're a dynasty guy, is going to shoot up the rankings. And when you look at his stats, you could see why. He's just not on the radar yet. So dynasty lovers, go ahead and add Chase Petty to your 
etching in your kitchen table. Danny Fuller says anyone that knows Jock, he's known as a jock strap by some of his teammates. I highly doubt any of his teammates said that out loud publicly. And you know how I feel about that. People talk about what teammates feel about each other. And I just, I feel like it's just a bunch of bull dinky and poppycock. These media vultures will do anything to ruin a player's reputation, even when they don't have a damn clue how his teammates feel about him. Either way, if that's your reasoning for staying away from Jock Peterson, good luck in fantasy, my friend. Thank you, Captain Danny. Thanks to everybody in the chat room. And um, Laura, wonderful. Nice to see you and Mary. You're my favorites. Okay, that's it. There are tons of sleepers. We're talking about them more coming up the next couple weeks. And I hope everybody enjoys their Saturday. And we will see you tomorrow morning, Lady and the Legend, 9 a.m.